Zoom fatigue. Joel Patterson is a workplace culture expert, and he actually heads up the Vested Group, which is a firm that's always on the best places to work list. Joel is on the Lamarca Law Group Newsmakers line. And welcome back to the program, Joel. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, Jeff. How you doing? I'm doing great, Joel. Is Zoom fatigue a real thing? There is uh, no doubt that that is a real thing. Uh, you kind of <laughs> just hit on it, Ben. We all of a sudden have gone from hour-long meetings in the office face-to-face to uh, what seems like three Zoom meetings in an hour because of the, 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 just the way that they're conducted. You know, I mean, they're, they're much more focused on getting to the point, talking about what you need to talk about, and then hanging up. And there's just a lot of things that we're missing out on, little social cues, for example. You know, a lot of times when you get into a meeting, the first thing that you do is kind of build some rapport. How was your evening or how was your morning or what else is going on in your world? And we don't get that anymore. And then when you're in a meeting where you would normally be able to kind of pick up on some body language or maybe just be able to, to sense what's going on with somebody, uh, you really can't do that through a Zoom call. And so there's no time to really interpret where they're coming from or, or maybe what's, what's impacting the, the response to whatever question you just asked. It's, it, it's a real challenging situation for sure. Is there a time when an employee can feel like they can speak up about it and and say, do we really need another Zoom meeting? Because a lot of times, Joel, in the office, we all laugh about all the meetings we get called to, but we never say anything about it. But is there a point where it gets out of control and an employee should speak up about it? For sure. Uh, You know, it goes back to just kind of basic communication for any organization. That's important. But in this situation, yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, it's funny. I think the honeymoon period with video conferencing is officially over is what it feels like. To me. I mean, we, everybody almost got a little excited about it. The technology was holding up. It made sense. But now that we've, we've gotten used to it, it's just become another way to communicate. And I'm hearing, I'm even hearing people say, well, let's, let's have an e- let's just send this over email or let's actually gasp, have a phone call. Um, I mean, there, there is other ways to handle it. And, and sometimes I think that those might be uh, simpler even though that seems old school now, just to pick up the phone and talk to somebody if you don't need to have a face-to-face conversation. Because when you are face think about it this way, you never sit in a person-to-person meeting looking at that person three feet away from you and just staring at them. And that's really <laughs> what you're doing when you're on a video call. You know what I mean? And, and that, yeah, it's such that, a good point, man. At, yeah, you're also looking at yourself, right, and being hypercritical of what's going on there. You're anxious about what's going on in the background. Maybe your kids or your dog is going to bark or whatever might happen. All of those yeah. things lead to this kind of sense of hyper focus, which just at the end of the day makes you really tired. Well, and that's an important point, Joel, because the other thing I've been reading about this is that these nonstop Zoom meetings actually do cause a mental fatigue. And you agree with that, don't you? Absolutely. I don't think there's any, any doubt about it. And there's some things that you can do. Uh, to try to help that. One thing you can do is just have a little time at the beginning of a meeting to, to, to just catch up a little. I know that's a little bit forced at times, but with the right crowd, mm-hmm. that, that makes a difference. I'll tell you one thing that I know everybody is guilty of, including me, and that's multitasking during a call. Uh, oh, yeah. I can respond to this email or I can text this person all while I'm listening to somebody talk and pretend like you're not looking down. That doesn't work. You're definitely going to, you're, you're really just making the problem worse by trying to do that. So limiting that multitasking makes a ton of sense. Uh, you can also block out time for non-video calls. Uh, so if you are, unfortunately, in a back-to-back-to-back situation with video calls all day long, you're going to be better off if you can even just get five minutes of time to try to, to, to not have to be focused like that. And then one of the things that I'm always pushing is to make sure that people have fun. And, and this, this is kind of a weird one for, for fun, but Zoom calls can be fun. We're trying something new today that I'm kind of <laughs> excited about and, and scared at the same time. We are having an all-hands meeting, but uh, nobody knows this yet, but what we're actually doing is one of the guys from the, from the office is coming in, and I'm going to cut his hair with a stylist on a Zoom call also to walk me through it. So you can actually um, find ways to be creative and do things that are, that are fun on a Zoom call, which takes the pressure off a little bit when you're on serious ones. Right, and it relieves the fatigue. That's absolutely correct. Workplace culture expert Joel Patterson from The Vested Group. Joel, thanks for your advice today. Important topic, and we'll talk again soon. I appreciate it. Take care.